Hello guys, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. Let's begin today's current affairs class. I hope guys you all know that we have launched the live courses for RBI, SEBI and NABAD. We also have launched the crash course for NABAD. So if you really want to know more about the courses, you can go to our application as well as you can scroll down our website. So uh, let's begin with the first question. Where was the Ayushman Bharat digital mission hackathon series organized in the hybrid? So here guys, option A, Pune is the right answer. Usually whenever we discuss about a hackathon, we rarely talk about the place where it was launched. But here the place is also important because this hackathon was organized in partnership with the Pune Municipal Corporation. Therefore, the place is also important. Now, every kind of hackathon, guys, is for innovating, is for inviting the innovative ideas. So, similarly, the purpose of this hackathon is also to invite ideas so that the, uh, the mission, the Ayushman Bharat digital mission can be a successful story. Okay. So, that is the basic idea. Now, this hackathon has two themes. First is the innovation track, which under which basically the startups or the participants would be uh, made to create the innovative technologies through which the unified health interface can be implemented. Another one is the uh, integration track. So under this theme, basically the innovative technologies that would help the existing healthcare facilities to integrate themselves with the unified healthcare uh, interface that would be created under this theme. Okay. Now, this is the first round of this hackathon. More rounds will be uh, conducted and the title of this first round is Kickstarting UHI Integration Challenges. The prize money for the winners is set at 60 lakhs and this is a huge amount can be asked, so do remember. <clears throat> okay, the next question is, which IIT has developed a bio-inspired artificial muscle for next generation? Uh, space robots and medical prosthesis. So here IIT Kanpur is the right answer. Now guys, it is a technology developed by an IIT. So here, what is the point that you need to remember apart from the technology? The point is that it has been developed by Spark Materials Structures and Systems Laboratory. So the other way around, the question can be framed for you from this news is that this laboratory is located uh, or is a part of which IIT? So you should be knowing the fact that it is a part of IIT Kanpur. Okay, so which state has partnered with Flipkart to create a pool of talented personnel in the e-commerce logistics sector? So here guys, Bihar is the right answer. Usually Bihar does not appear in the news so much, but right now it does. So Flipkart and Bihar State Skill Development Mission. Both of these entities have collaborated to train the personnel, to train the people of Bihar in the logistic sector. Okay. So you all know that whenever you order something, you purchase something from your e-commerce website, you just place the order, but the work of transferring or delivering that product to your place is done in the logistics segment. So to train the professionals in the logistics segment <coughs> in the e-marketplace, uh, this partnership has taken place. Okay. Which state is running the mission Buniyat? So here Delhi is the right answer. Now guys, under this mission Buniyat, the school students, their uh, basic skills in the language, Hindi and English and mathematics will be strengthened. Okay. Uh, and the mission Buniyat was launched basically to bridge the gap that was created because of the COVID induced lockdowns and school closures. Okay. So that is the basic idea. Okay. So here we have a very interesting question. Under which act? Will the zero coupon, zero principal instruments be treated as securities? So you have the five options out of which securities, contracts, regulation, Act 1956 is the right answer. Now, what is zero coupon, zero principal instrument? Let's first understand the meaning and then we will move into the details. 
कूपन गाइज इज कूपन रेट इज द इंटरेस्ट रेट ऑफ अ बॉन्ड और अ सिक्योरिटी सो हियर वट डज इट मीन दैट यू वुड नॉट गेट एनी इंटरेस्ट ऑन दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट ओके नाउ नॉट ओनली द इंटरेस्ट यू वुड ऑल्सो नॉट गेट योर प्रिंसिपल इन अमाउंट इफ यू हैव इन्वेस्टेड इन दिस काइंड ऑफ इंस्ट्रूमेंट सो वट डज इट मीन वाई वुड एनी वन इन्वेस्ट इन द इंस्ट्रूमेंट दैट वुड नॉट पे दैम एटलीस्ट देयर प्रिंसिपल अमाउंट सो गाइज Here is the catch. These kinds of instruments will be launched by the non-profit organizations, <clears throat> which are a part of your social stock exchange. Okay, so obviously, on a social stock exchange, which is a very novel concept in India, launched last year only. So, in, on the social stock exchanges, the NPOs are given the platform to raise funds from the public. So that is the basic idea of. these kinds of instruments now you would say that why to make things so complex if i want to donate i will directly go to the ngo i will directly donate there why would i go to the ssc and then buy this instrument so guys government also has brains and why has it uh, come up with this instrument the reason behind this is that once you have purchased the bond once it is listed on any exchange obviously the transparency level ha increases okay and also the transparency about the fund being used for the project also increases so that is the basic idea okay so you would be in a better position to assess the money that you have donated to a particular cause whether it is being used for that cause and whether it is used optimally or not so all of these informations will be allowed uh, available to all of you so it is basically a donation okay so that is only written here that these securities will be listed on the exchanges okay and zero coupon zero principal instruments are issued by the not for profit organizations on the social stock exchange now guys these instruments will be governed by sebi obviously ssc's are also governed by sebi so ye bhi sebi hi govern karega okay now remember this thing that the social stock exchanges we have the national stock exchange we have the bombay stock exchange but have you ever heard about the headquarters or the location of the social stock exchange i guess no because there is no such brick and mortar existence of this exchange it is a segment within the exchanges okay so do remember this point so it is a part of the existing stock exchange is another segment okay now here is another important statement the proposed size of these instruments okay the maximum amount for which a, a zero coupon zero principal instrument can be issued is expected to be 1 crore and the application it's the minimum amount starting amount from uh, which the uh, instrument would be listed on the exchange and the application amount would be set at rupees 2 lakh minimum okay uh basically an individual can give maximum of 2 lakh to this uh instrument okay towards this instrument and there is no clarity whether these instruments will be transferable or not like the other securities okay so that is also a fact but in my opinion this would not be transferable in nature why would you have a donation receipt uh carved out on your name and transfer it to other person that would not give you any benefit especially if you are talking about the income tax benefit now if we are on that topic why not discuss about something about the uh, the deduction that you would get on the income tax if you subscribe to this instrument <coughs> okay so these bonds are subscribed for the purpose of donation donation donors can avail a 100% tax deduction if they have uh, subscribed to these instruments currently the donation given to the private entities of that donation you can avail 50% tax deduction but if you have given the donation to a government run organization then you can avail a 100% deduction okay so that deduction is given under the atg section of income tax act so guys also remember this uh, section of income tax under which you get the deduction 
ओके सो द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट वी हैव इज इन विच स्टेट इज राष्ट्रीय इस्पात निगम लिमिटेड स्टैब्लिशिंग द सेंटर ऑफ एक्सीलेंस फॉर इंडस्ट्री फोर पॉइंट टू नेम्ड एज कालपटरू ओके सो हेयर आंध्र प्रदेश इज द राइट आंसर देर इज नथिंग मच टू दिस न्यूज इट्स जस्ट दैट अ सेंटर ऑफ एक्सीलेंस इज गोइंग टू बी इस्टेब्लिश फॉर promoting the startups in the steel plant and industries okay in the startups who are working in the activities related to the steel or steel plant and industries and this center of excellence will be established in andhra pradesh to boost the start startups in and around visakhapatnam <coughs> okay i have told you the name of this center of excellence and remember that this is being established this center of excellence is being established with the funding from the ministry of electronics and it and your rashtriya ispat nigam limited and the government of andhra pradesh so that is all regarding this news the next question is which has become the first e commerce platform to own board the open network digital commerce so here guys option b snap deal is the right answer so snap deal has onboarded this platform and along with that ondc has been launched in 15 more cities it was launched on a pilot basis in delhi bangalore coimbatore uh, bhopal shillong in april and now it has expanded its wing wings into more cities <coughs> okay so what is the consumer deposit range for the urban cooperative banks which lie in the tier 3 structure of rbi <clears throat> okay so here the right answer is option a now let me first tell you what is this about last year rbi has formed ns vishwanathan committee on urban cooperative banks so that the committee can give recommendations to strengthen that uh, strengthen that sector in august of the same year this committee submitted its recommendations now in july 2022 we are seeing that rbi has adopted those recommendations that is why it is again in the news okay now what are the recommendations let's move on to the recommendations directly because they are going to be asked directly from you in the examination so guys the ns vishwanathan committee has suggested a four tiered uh, you can say structure for classifying the ucbs okay the urban cooperative banks which have which take deposits up to rupees 100 crores will be under the tier 1 category tier 1 category also includes your urban cooperative banks uh, which are only single branched okay unit ucbs are the single branched ucbs the urban cooperative banks which have only one branch and if you only have one branch you are not supposed to reach this level of deposits but still all such ucbs would follow or would fall under this tier 1 category next is your salary earners ucbs which are the urban cooperative banks established by the salary salaried persons okay so these two ucbs and your uh, general ucbs which take deposits up to 100 crore all such ucbs would come under tier 1 then your tier 2 would have rupees 100 to 1000 crore uh, deposits then in tier 1 the ucbs which accept the deposits up to 1000 to 10000 then in tier 4 deposits worth more than 10000 crores guys you need to remember this data this is important because your nabard is also coming up okay i hope that all of you know that as far as the cooperative banks are concerned we have rural cooperative banks we have urban cooperative bank in rural we divide the cooperative banks on the basis of the duration of loans that they give okay long term and short term in your short term your examples like your uh primary agricultural cooperative society comes and other uh, uh, lending institutions which give the loans to the farmers for a shorter period of time okay and in the long term your organizations which lend for a long period of time would come and both of these are a part of the rural cooperative banks but we are talking about the urban cooperative banks okay 
so as far as the urban cooperative banks are concerned we have the state and multi state cooperatives so i hope that this much clarification you all have on the cooperative banks and remember that the uh, that the regulation of the ucbs especially is done by the rbi directly they are regulated and monitored and supervised by the rbi only so do remember this fact okay as far as the finances are concerned now <coughs> the ucbs need to have a minimum net worth of 2 crores uh, in the tier 1 okay so all the ucbs which are in the tier 1 they need to have a net worth of 2 crores okay 100 crore was the deposit that they take from the public and from its members so these ucbs which are operating in a single district and 5 crore for all other U, uh, ucbs in all tiers okay so 2 crores is for tier 1 ucbs and 5 crore is the minimum net worth for the other tiers ucbs the minimum capital adequacy ratio for the tier 1 is 9% and it is 12% for uh, okay 12% for the other ucbs now this is important okay so a phased manner of transition has been given for increasing their cr ar so this is important capital adequacy ratio should be increased to 10% by 24 11% by 25 12% by 26 then guys it's a matter of fact that we have 1534 ucbs in india and out of them 1274 ucbs have the uh, have a capital adequacy ratio of over 12% as on 31st march 2021 so a little work uh, needs to be done in this segment particularly but still rbi or the committee basically has given five years tenure for the ucbs to comply with all the regulations all the recommendations that have been provided now guys the next question is jc daniel award is the highest honor in cinema given by which state so it is given by kerala now recently this award has been given to kp kumara okay for his contr contribution to the malayalam cinema who is the author of the re resilient entrepreneur so here guys dhruti shah is the right answer so here this video ends i hope that you have enjoyed the video if you have then do share this video among your friends thank you so much guys for watching the video if you want to contact us you have our phone number you have our mail id you have discussions.anujinder.in so don't feel alone in your preparation journey we are here to help you all thank you so much guys for watching the video on that note goodbye